Okay, so now you're seeing what we were talking about just a minute ago, which is uh, up to the minute results of, of where we're at. So we use we trade in nine different ETF sectors, everything from the Dow stocks, everything to oil to gold to semiconductors, represented by ETFs. So as of right now, as of today, you can see there on the on the screen the the top three, the the Dow, the SPY, and the Qs. We're all bearish, so we're in some some. Uh, currently losing trades. Hopefully, obviously, those will turn around. But you can see we have some very profitable trades on oil and gold, on real estate, on materials. So, and a new signal that just came out today, like 38 or 40 minutes ago, on semiconductors. So that's what we're going to talk about. Um, so, of course, this webinar video file is provided for the express purpose of disclosing proprietary investment system. The main one down at the bottom is the past results of any trading or investment system are not necessarily, necessarily indicative of future performance. You all know that, but you know we do need to say that every time. Um, so why should you listen to me? You know, quite frankly, I'm from a small dairy farming town, Preston, Idaho. If you ever saw the 2004 movie Napoleon Dynamite, it's actually filmed in my hometown, and my cousins, believe it or not, are credited extras in that movie. So I didn't grow up with a silver spoon. I didn't go to private school or anything of the sort. But I did get lucky in that I was around for the rise of the internet, right? The internet startups. And so um, one of my very first jobs was I worked for an internet startup, and we sold that in 1998 for. A uh, nice chunk of change, $11 million. So since then, I've traveled around the world working with multimillionaires, a lot of internet startups. Um, you know, I've been in a number of books. Uh, you know, these are this is me on, on the Learjet. These are some of my, my clients. I've spoken at seminars in London, in Costa Rica, in Australia, in, in uh, Malaysia, in Singapore, all over the world. And I've appeared in a number of uh, best-selling books about the internet, about uh, kind of that dot-com boom. But if you're anything like me, and probably most of you on this call are, every time I've turned my investment dollars over to others, it's bombed. So I have no trouble making money, right? But every time I turned in the past, turned my money over to someone else, an investment advisor of some sort, um, you know, they all, all of a sudden the returns dissipated, right? You know, they had a, a they would have tremendous track records, but it just so happened that the year that I turned my money over to them, you know, uh, there were negative returns for the year or returns were flat. But on the other hand, if I'm anything like most of you, I have zero desire to day trade or be chained to my desk. And so, you know, my biggest goal is to be able to travel the world. You know, I've actually been to over 50 countries now. Uh, which is one of my great passions in life. And my other passion is, you know, spending time with my wife and three kids. So uh, that picture is a little bit dated. I need to update that. My son, the one on the left, is actually six eight now. <laughs> I'm six six. So that's a kind of a, a shocking experience when your when your kids get taller than you. I'm sure uh, many of you have had that experience as well. So what I'm looking for is a way to get way above market returns, lots of compounding, but do it in less than 15 minutes a week. I don't want this to be a full time job. Uh, you know, I'm a part-time trader. I have uh, other businesses that I run during the day, like like many of you. But I do want to get above market returns, and I want to have the ability to compound my money, and in less than 15 hours a week. So, what are the results of the system? Well, the box score of this system was what we call it. Goes back uh, almost nine years now, and the boiled down number is down there in the bottom right. We're averaging 3.11 percent per sector per month across nine different ETFs. And just to put, kind of put that in perspective, if you go, went back to January 2007, which is the first date that we started publishing these signals, and put $10,000 in each of the nine different ETFs, on the Dow, you would have turned that 10000 into almost 150. On the SPY, it would have been about 85000 On the Qs, about 100000 On the KBE, about 900000 On oil, about 130000 or so. On gold, nearly 400000 Semiconductors about 160. Uh, uh, the real estate been on a massive tear recently. And you'd be turn that 10,000 into almost 900,000 dollars. The XLB about 225,000 dollars. So the, the top lines on there show with compounding. The lines underneath it with with no compounding. So with compounding, you would have turned 90,000 dollars into a little over three million, which is a 33 times increase in those uh, in those nine years. But even without compounding, you would have turned that $90,000 into 400, still respectable, with zero compounding, a four and a half times increase. So that's what we're going to talk about today: is how the system works, how it uh, plays into my customers' trading plans, and the way that I use it. 
and uh, the way that I recommend that you use it. So before we get to that, let's make sure that everyone has a basic understanding of what an ETF is. So it, in the chat, if you could just give a, a quick Y if you have a basic understanding of what an ETF is, and a quick N if you, if you don't have an understanding of what a basic ETF is. We'll kind of make sure that we get some of those. Okay, we got most people are putting in Ys. Got, well, a ton of Ys. Just a couple of notes. Okay, so uh, we'll skip over most of the basic information, but a basic ETF is just an artificial index created to exactly mimic the, mimic the underlying basket of stocks. There's no management fee. The price fluctuates just as the underlying go, does. You don't have to have a fund manager doing stock picking. Uh, for example, if we were looking at the, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, this is a chart showing the ups and downs of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And the very next page, if we show the DIA, which is the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, you'll notice if I flip back and forth, you notice that the candle does look almost identical. That's because the DIA is designed that way, to exactly replicate the movements up and down in the Dow. So why would we want to trade ETFs anyway? Why would we use ETFs in, instead of some other investment vehicle? Well, we're talking in this particular um, uh, session today about swing trading. We're talking about uh, short-term positions, usually about uh, you know a couple days to a couple weeks in length. So it's kind of you know we're not talking about day trading. We're not talking about long long-term buy and hold by by any shot. But why would we use ETFs for this? Well. ETFs have a lot lower lower expenses. They have uh, a higher tax efficiency. They have financial flexibility. You know, when I first started in this and we were first got into ETFs, we were astounded that there was over 500 ETFs back there back then. Well, now uh, I lost track at 1,400. Basically, if there's a section of the market that you want to trade, if for example, if you think uh, for some reason that the New Zealand economy is going to boom and you want to invest in New Zealand, well, in the past you'd have to you know, buy New Zealand stocks in New Zealand companies. Now you just buy a New Zealand ETF. Or what about the Southeast Asia ETF? Or what about the uh, highest dividend paying companies in America ETF? There, there's there's an ETF configuration for just about anything that you want to trade. Uh, consistent market performance. You know, these ETFs are linked to usually major market indexes. They routinely outperform most of Wall Street's actively managed funds, and of course, the mass appeal. So here's what we do with this system and how we generate these signals and how we generate that table. And we'll go back and show you that table a little bit more in depth of what we're talking about. So how we generate the signals. We do use technical analysis. However, if you think about it, technical analysis by itself um, seems to be one of those things that's a little bit of a gotcha. Because going back to the 1960s, we've always had this technical analysis idea. Uh, but we don't have a single holy grail yet, right? There's no green light that turns on your computer or soft computer voice that says, hey, it's time to buy Motorola. If you go to any bookstore, Barnes and Noble, or or, or anything the like, you'll you'll notice there's whole bookshelves filled with uh, books on trading, filled with different kinds of technical indicators, techn uh, technical indicators like oscillators and things like that. Larry Williams himself has filled multiple books uh, on those sorts of things. But really, when it boils down to it, we only have three basic elements to work with, and everyone is looking at exactly the same elements. So what are those three elements? It's price time and volume. Now, quick pop quiz. Which of those out of those three, which are the most commonly used? Which are the two most commonly used? Price, time, or volume? If you're looking at technical indicators, what do they more often use than the other? Which are more used? Well, the simple answer is price and time are, are factored into almost every single technical indicator. However, volume, uh, the little lonely volume on that, is often ignored. So a lot of times, people will scramble to put their names on a proprietary indicator that it manipulates those events in a slightly different fashion and produces a slightly different result. The basic failure of all those is they all use moving averages, right? Whether you're looking at standard deviations or Bollinger Bands, MACD, stochastics, parabolics, uh, smooth exponential or runes or Keltner channels, they're all based on moving averages. Now, even a newbie knows that moving averages are a huge gotcha. But and you know, moving averages, it's not that they don't work, it's just that they don't work all the time. And that's where the real expertise lies. Moving averages don't work when the market's trading flat and the markets are flat 40% of the time. So are you willing to count on a tool that's going to be wrong 40% of the time when, when the markets are flat? But if you're anything like me, you have tons of friends that are still trying to make something work with a you know 200-day moving average or a 50-day moving average, and, and uh, they're just trying to tweak the settings. 
Well, you know, personally, for the last 15 years, I've avoided moving averages like the plague just for that reason. Sure, I still look at stochastics every once in a while in my secret sauce, kind of a 5 through 3 when I'm watch, watching for a trend change or confirmation. But I really don't even use candlesticks, even though I study them very intensely for over a year. I try to look for areas that are nerded by the rest of the pack, because if you know anything about the stock market, you know the pack is invariably wrong. So what gets us down, we've talked about what we don't do, let's talk about what we do. Uh, well, we start with optionable stocks, options and ETFs, and regardless of how you decide to trade, I recommend you do exactly the same. It's been proven that stocks that have options on them are much better trading vehicles than stocks that don't have options on them. The volume alone uh, tells the difference. Optional stocks trade, on average, 2.2 million shares per day, non-optional, just 119,000. Now, some of this plays in the fact that we're, we're basing our indicator on volume itself, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But regardless of, of how you trade, tra sticking with stocks that have options on them is going to uh, offer gr much more liquid liquidity to the market, uh, much more trading opportunities. The second thing is, is we, um, you know, we look at these ETFs, we're looking at these uh, ETFs are usually a mishmash of price weighted, market cap weighted, or equally weighted. To cut to the chase, we believe the only sensible way to treat these is equally weighted. That means we're looking for a sector move across the entire sector that's spread out incrementally among all the stocks. So if we're looking at S&P 500, every stock in there has one 500th weight, whether it's priced at $4 or 400. So that allows us to see the underlying trend, what's happening in that sector as a whole. Then we look up what we call the on balance volume for individual components that make up the ETF. That's what we have uh, morphed and created into what we call our ETF tipping point. Now, this is easier said than done. The original concept goes all the way back to Joe Granville, and he introduced this in his 1963 book, New Key to Stock Market Profits. This was one of the first and most popular indicators to measure positive and negative volume flow. The concept behind this indicator is quite simple, and these, this is the magic three words. Volume precedes price. A major change in volume is always going to precede a major change in, pro change in price, either bullish or bearish. And it's so important we even put it on its own slide. And so if you take nothing away from this event today, um, have, you know, have it be known that Kirk Christensen strongly believes that volume precedes price and that we should be looking at that. So if we go back to Joe Granville's original idea in 1963, granted this was before computers, this was you know, when price charts were printed in, in basically like uh, catalogs and, and sent to you in the mail, um, his calculation is a cumulative total of volume additions and subtractions forms the OBV line. And that's created by when you add a period's volume when it closes up and subtract a period's volume when it closes down. Of course, the problem with that is you know, they're only doing this calculation once per day at the end of the day we're going to look for something a little bit more finely tuned. So sk skip some of this. This is kind of the obvious things that if the new OBV, if yesterday's OBV is, is if the price closes below yesterday's price, we subtract today's volume from, from the OBV line. So what we create is what we call our ETF tipping point. So what we do, instead of just measuring something at the end of the day, we look at every single stock individually that makes up the, the entire ETF. So that means for the S&P 500, we keep a running total throughout the day as to whether there's more buying or selling pressure going on on every single trade, tick by tick. So does anybody have a guess? How do we know whether there's more buying pressure or selling pressure on a single transaction? Go ahead and take that, uh, take a few seconds to type in and answer that. How are we going to know whether there's more buying or selling pressure going on on every single transaction, on every single stock that makes it up S&P 500? Okay, we have a few answers coming in. I haven't seen any of the right ones yet. Okay, well, quite simply, we evaluate the bid price and the ask price of the trade. And if the sale went off closer to the ask price, then the sellers are willing to hold out for higher price. Buyers are willing to pay a bid extra. If the sale went off at the bid price, then it was the sellers who are willing to move the prices down toward the buyers who were in control, able to force the hand. So that establishes whether a positive or negative tick volume which, like Granville's original idea, allows us to set up with a greater, more precise measure where the real power lies. Where's the power, with the buyers or the sellers? Now, by the end of the day, we can look at a losing day in terms of price, but we know that on balance it was actually a bullish or bearish move for the majority of the stock. At that point, we simply do a cumulative summation for the next 13 sessions. At the end of that time, we now have a pretty good idea of what percentage of stocks are advancing on hidden power or failing despite rising prices. 
So at the end of the day, we know that out of 500 stocks in the S&P 500, how many are positive, greater than 50% with more real accumulation, how many are negative. Using this synthetic ETF tipping point line, we have a high degree of confidence what's really happening, what's really happening with the undercurrent of that sector. If you've ever been out to a river, and uh, you know rivers can be very deep or they can be very shallow, and sometimes people go out to a very, very deep river and they'll be moving extremely slowly. But uh, when they get in, they, they can really sense the power that's not apparent from the surface of the river. And that's what happens in these ETFs. There's a lot of things that ha that's happening, the undercurrent, while the price is staying, you know, price is staying stable or price is moving up or slightly down, that uh, is, is an indicator of, of what's, to what's to come. So no, notice all of this then is without the use of a moving averages. Um, I have the highest disdain for moving averages, and I won't trade anything that has anything to do with market uh, with moving averages. So, see now we've been collecting this information the prior 13 trading days. We also know where each company within the ETF sits in terms of the positive and ne negative trend. So, let's walk you through the the whole process. It's really just three steps. At this point, I am going to assume that you decided to develop to forego the development of your own tick by tick collection platform, and you're going to use our signals. Um, like we mentioned, I have spent over $95,000 perfecting this exact system uh, in programming costs. Just you know, when I originally started this in 2007, the programming wasn't quite there to be able to do this as elegantly and effortlessly as you can now. So, the early years, I uh, I kind of paid the price for that and kind of had to do a lot of the that grunt work to get it set up. Now, now uh, when we do updates and uh, code revamps, it's it's much much easier. But of course. Some of you are going to want to do this on your own. I've just described for you exactly what we've done, something that uh, we, you know, we spent uh, close to $100,000 on. So what we do is we watch for the signals notification. It comes out after 12.30 p.m. or 3.30 p.m. Eastern. That's why we referenced you know, the, the most recent trade signal when it came out. It comes out 30 minutes before the close of the market. Um, you can use our email or tech services to make it hands-off for you. You can trade the next morning if you can't trade during the day, but you do lose a little bit of advantage in returns. And then you simply, you can either buy or short the, the core ETF, the single ETF, uh, or you can buy the double ETF or the double inverse ETF, or you can buy calls or puts on the double ETF, right? So we've just revealed there's four different ways to trade it. There's actually five, and we'll talk about the fifth here in a minute. And then you simply hold that position until you receive a signal to reverse or until you stopped out. So you could be in a cash position if your trade gets stopped out. In that case, we would wait for the next single signal and re-enter the market. An ETF is either bearish or bullish. If you're only comfortable playing to the upside, then only trade when bullish and go to cash for that ETF when they're bearish. So every day around um, 12.30 p.m. Pacific, you'll send out an alert with the status of where we believe signals will be by the end of the day. This is done by posting on our blog, and then we send out an a, a email and text message. And like we talked about, this is the current status of the trading system. So we have uh, the SMH, SMH trade that you can see there on the seventh line, the two up from the bottom. It was just generated today, so it's a brand new signal. The other trades we have, you know, trades are 18 days old, 25 days old. The oldest trade is 74, which is kind of a long, long trade. But granted, it's up 34%, so we're not going to complain. And you know, a couple of trades are 62 days old, and they're up four and and nine percent. So again, we're not going to not going to complain. So then we simply do that again, over again, a couple hundred more times. So so far in the system, we've done that. 1,024 times so far uh, since 2007. So you also notice on the signals page there's a column for options. So I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with options and some of the benefits of options. Um, I'm a big believer in options. Uh, I believe options, when done properly, actually carry ri less risk than trading the underlying ETF, and we'll explain that in a second. Uh, we do use a slightly different uh, a uh, slightly different method to trading options than a lot of people. Okay, so what we do is we generate our, use our proprietary options engine that knows the way we like to trade. We like to trade deep in the money options, typically, typically with a delta of about 70 to 75, and typically four to six months out. So for example, uh, today on the, the trade today, you'll see there on the screen the SMH, the second one from the bottom, it gives the SMH option as a uh, as an August uh, call at the 47 strike for the single ETF, or if you wanted to do the uh, the two times ETF, it would be a November uh, call at the 79 strike. And so, how those trade, 
you know, our preferred method is actually to trade the options on the WTFs. While two times ETFs don't always perform double the one times indexes, they do generally perform better. Um, so for those of you not traded options before, we do have some words of caution and encouragement done properly. Like I mentioned, I do believe that options actually carry less risk than the underlying stock. There are dozens of options courses out there that could teach you that, you know, they run anywhere from $1,500 to $7,500. They all basically teach you the same thing, how to lose your money less slowly. By the time most newbies and options reach six months, 93% will never trade an option again. Of course, that's where we want to be in a game that has 93% losers. That means 7% of the traders are keeping all the money, and that's where we want to be. I've been trading options over 20 years. I absolutely love it. So what goes wrong when we're talking about options? Well, initially everyone is obsessed with the fair value of the option as it approaches expiration. You're taught to look for cheap, mispriced options that will hopefully double their money in the last three weeks. And so you plunge for 10 contracts of acne rubber. It's out of the money with three, three weeks to run. At 35 cents each, that equates to $350 to control the equivalent of uh, 1,000 shares of stock. Three weeks go by and your mispriced option is now worth 70 cents on expiration day. You just doubled your money. The only problem is, is you know, that was luck. You, it's not talent. And just like first-time Vegas gamblers, you may never win again. So we could care less if an option is mispriced. I don't want to hold it to expiration. I only want to rent it for a while and then I want to sell to someone else so they can hold it to expiration. We buy options that are four to six months out. We never hold it closer than one month to expiration. We do this if we even if we only expect to be in the trade for a month. We do have to pay a premium to buy it this many months away, but we'll get most or all that premium back when we sell it to the next sucker. By renting stocks this way, I'm using the options as a proxy for the stock and get to get the gains without the obligation. Okay. So let's skip over that. So one of the main things uh, to counsel you when you're talking about options is to not overinvest. Only invest um, the same amount of money that you put in that you would put into the equity to control the same amount of stocks. So in our system, if you have three thousand dollars into each of the nine sectors, uh, at that point, if you wanted to in invest additional money, we would recommend to put in one options contract for every three thousand dollars invested in the sector, or uh, one options contract for every five thousand dollars invested in the two times ETF. So do not overinvest. Do not overinvest in options. So, like we mentioned, buy enough to return what you expect to make on a stock-only purchase. There's enough compounded leverage in the system to make everything that you need. Um, if all this, you know, kind of makes your head swim, just keep track of the options prices as, as you go through the course, and you'll notice over time and become uh, a believer. The other thing is uh, best-in-class buying. Well, how can we just take the cream of the crop and not get the dogs? Let's say that we get a signal to buy on the HUI, which is our gold miners index, which is our proxy for the gold index. Well, we know that there's 15 stocks in this basket, and uh, we're spreading the risk among this basket. But of course, uh, the problem is, is that uh, we're also buying the dogs as well as the high flyers. So what we do is we uh, allow you a way around that. Uh, we evaluate the stocks that make up the ETF as well as uh, what's going on the ETF itself. So let's take a look at that. Uh, right here. So on this particular day, this isn't this isn't current or anything, but uh, on this particular day, the Dow had a uh, a bullish signal, right? And on that day of those Dow 30 stocks, that if you wanted to cherry pick the, the top two or three, you would look at Alcoa, Chevron, and Boeing. So what they're saying is now, while the entire sector is on a bullish move up. You still have a couple stocks that are dragging down the sector. At the bottom, you got Hewlett Packard, J.P. Morgan, and United Health Group. But there's a couple stocks you're picking off the cream of the crop. So it's something that's in the current of the stream, in, in the current of this river. It's going in the correct direction, and it's going faster than uh, the stream itself. So in that case, we would buy the Alcoa, the Chevron, and the Boeing. And again, we have options available on those. We'll evaluate and show you which Alcoa options, which Chevron options, which Boeing options to, to pick. Um, and so this system is normally too volatile to chase. Uh, we, we sometimes get people who want to you know, evaluate against some other confirmation uh, or some other you know, uh, top or bottom of the market or some other moving average even. And then they ask me about it, and <laughs> that always is, is humorous. But you'll notice in the closed trades that the average trade length is, is about 12 days, but you'll see that we do have quite a few trades that only last one to four days. So the idea with this was to give us a simple way uh, 
uh, to get our money working for us in a kind of a swing trading fashion, not day trading, not being chained to a desk, and having us be able to get above market returns in less than 15 minutes a week. So of course, uh, usual, usual legal stuff, our attorneys make a stay, financial markets risky, investing is risky, past performance does not guarantee future performance. So who might be interested? This is my quick uh, you know, two minute sales pitch for the ETF tipping point. If you have any interest in this, um, feel free to take us up on this. If not, of course, that's uh, fine as well. We've been doing this for almost 10 years now. We'll be, we're here for the long run. This is a system that I use in my, in my daily investing day by day, and I, I tell you it's made a dramatic difference in my, in, in my life. So the, again, the box score, here's exactly where we're at today. Uh, you know, pretty representative. We have some losing trades, some winning trades. In general, obviously, we're going to be uh, uh, on average winning because we, we average more than 3% a month. Uh, across all the months that go all the way back to January of 2007. But um, what, is the, what does this picture represent? Have a couple people typing in the answers. Yep, that's right. It is a hill of beans. That's what this all amounts to unless you take action on it. Like I said, I'm nobody special. Grew up in Preston, Idaho. I figured this out on my own as a retail investor. Never worked on the floor or anything like that, but I do have an offer to coach 25 of you. Um, we have obviously uh, multiples of that here on the call today, so not everyone's going to have that option. But we do have two op program options available, $997 for six months access or $2,997 for three years access. That's a 50% discount off the six-month rate. We do offer people the chance to just pay for six months, pay $9.97. If they like it and they want to stick with us, they just simply pay the dis difference between the $9.97 and the $2.9.97, no penalties. Of course, if you do buy the $2.9.97 package, we do give you the advantage of we give you our $15,000 auctions advanced workshop on DVD. We give you a free ticket to our annual trading science workshop here in Spokane Valley, Washington. We also give you my weekly option science course, which sells for $500, and we also give you my trading as a business course, which sells for $1,500 all day long. So kind of the difference between those two options. One is let me dip my toe in the water for $997. The other one is I'm going to go full in for $2,997. So I hate overhead. I could get some fancy marketing. Uh, you know, I have plain, plain slides here. Uh, that's just not my, not my thing. I'm more of a... Sit, sit in my office and do my trading and, and work with uh, a, a small select handful of happy customers. I could hire some fancy marketing, hire some full-time sales guys, but uh, here's my office in Spokane Valley, Washington. Uh, we're here four days a week, Monday through Thursday. I generally don't work Fridays and don't work the weekends. Uh, if you're ever in the area, feel free to stop by. We, we're here for the long run. We're here for our customers. Um, Instead of dealing with big wigs, hedge fund managers, I'd rather enjoy my free time. Deal with a few just uh, a few select customers. This is Dean. But we don't have time for we don't have time for that to go through the testimonials. But I'm willing to put my money where my mouth is on this ETF tipping point. I'm going to take the majority of the risk, giving you an ironclad two-part performance guarantee. Part one, quite simple: go through the entire training, start trading live. If you don't love it, get a complete refund anytime within 30 days, no questions asked. Part two. Learn the system, use it for a full six months, executing all the trades as they come up. If you don't at least make back the system investment, 997 from six month option, I'll personally work with you for free until you do. So either way, you love it and you make good money with it, or you hate it, you get your money back. I don't think we can be much more fair than that. Um, so there is a bonus for the first 25 signups. I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with uh, Kiva.org. We're going to make a donation in your name to Kiva.org. It's an organization that supports uh, entrepreneurs in the third world. We've supported entrepreneurs in over 20 countries with the help of our customers. We take a portion of each sale and donate to that, so that'll be done in your name. And also, we, we have that two-day live workshop that we held in Spokane, Washington. Um, uh, we hold that annually, so you'll be invited to the next upcoming one, which is going to be in the fall of 2016. You'll get tickets to that. So to claim one of the 25 spots, you can call a secure voice mail line at 509 720 7867 leave a detailed message with full name, address, phone, email, credit card number, along with the choice of packages you'd like. We return your call ASAP to confirm and process your order and answer any remaining questions. Or you can order online just by going to etftippingpoint.com slash six month or etftippingpoint.com slash three year. So I'm going to go ahead and take some time to take some uh, questions 
finished a little bit faster than, than I thought I really did talk fast, so we'll uh, uh, make sure we answer some questions. So here's a question from Alexander. He says, how much capital would you need to start with not to deal with times in profit? Well, Alexander, the absolute minimum that we, rep that we recommend is $500 per sector that you're going to get invested in. The reason for that is uh, with an ETF trade, it's going to cost you about five bucks to make the trade to get five bucks in, five bucks out. And on $500, that's 1%. Anything less than $500 per sector, of course, you know, you're paying a higher percentage to get in and out of the trade. So recommend a minimum of $500 per sector. Um, most of our students have obviously multiple multiples of that. Uh, if you want to, you know, consolidate some of your trading, you can just take selected signals until your account grows. You know, we have nine different sectors. You could choose to you know, trade in four or five of the sectors in the beginning. Great question, Alexander. Uh, this is Mithrin. This says, so are we trading on options? Well, it can. You can trade the options. We give you the signal, and uh, uh, you can you can make your or your choice how to trade it. Let me go to that slide real quick. Um, you know, so like today, oh, this is the. Let me get to. Let me get to that slide again. Hold on. Today there was a new trade that came up on SMH, so let me get to that real quick. So today there's a new trade on SMH. So the different ways that you could trade that on SMH is you could uh, simply uh, buy the SMH, because this was a bullish signal on SMH, or you could buy the two times ETF on the semiconductors, which in this case would be the USD, or you could buy the option on the SMH, which is a call, or you could buy the option on the USD, which is also a call. Or you could look at the individual components that make up the semiconductor index and place options or stock trades on the underlying components. So there's five different ways to trade it. Okay. Uh, this is from Alexander. He says, thank you. And how long would you hold your trades? Typically, we hold our trades about 21 days is how, how that it works. Um, let me get back to where we're at. Uh, about 21 days. Some trades are just last a couple days. Some drag on for you know like 60 days or so. This is from Walter. This is from Frank B. He says I'm looking at gambling systems and black box black box stock picking systems. They all work very well only when the market is in a trend. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the problems. Uh, you know, trend trading works great when um, when the markets are trending, but 40% of the time or, you know, entire years, the entire year 2011, almost nothing happened. This is from Frank. He said, uh, Frank said, I think some ETFs are taxable in your IRA account. Um, no, I mean, I'm not a, an attorney or a tax advisor, but as far as I know, no ETFs are taxable in an IRA account. Okay, so we've had a few calls come in. If you want to claim one of the 25 spots, go ahead and call secure voicemail line 509-720-7867. Or, of course, you can order online at etftippingpoint.com slash six month or etftippingpoint.com slash three year. I'm going to go ahead and answer a question until our time's out. Thanks, everyone, for being on. It's been a fabulous audience. This is from Johnny Hill. He says, what stock platform do you need to work with? It really doesn't matter what stock platform you're on. Um, they're all uh, almost equivalent when it comes to stocks. It could be E-Trade. It could be anything, really. Uh, I use Thinkorswim because uh, it's more of an options-specific platform, and I do a lot of options stuff. But, uh, you know, uh, any of them would work perfectly fine for this. This is from Dean Williams. He says, do you suggest which way to trade? Yes, we have the, the daily trade table that comes out. And so like on a day like today, it suggested you should go long on the SMH. The other trades hold. This is from Mithran. He says, I heard there are some guarantee, not 100%, but sort of, in ironclad options. Is that a strategy, kind of? Uh, I'm not under, uh, I think you might be, Mithran, you might be talking about, if you said ironclad options, maybe you're talking about iron condor options. Um, you know, I've traded iron condors over the years. 
I mean, it, it's not something that we do with this particular strategy because this is a directional strategy and iron condors are, a, are, a more, are not a more, they are a uh, market neutral strategy. This is from Frank B. He says, can you define your way of compounding? Yeah, quite simply, the way that our returns on the compounding are calculated is that in the beginning we set out uh, an equal allotment, so we put $10,000 into each ETF. At the conclusion of that trade, the remainder, uh, be it up or down, whether the trade was a winning or losing trade, we put that same amount into the next trade in that sector. So the compounding occurs at the end of one trade into the next trade. Okay, takes any other questions we got? This is from Shahzad. What have been the winning versus losing stats? I don't have that right here, uh, so I can't give you an exact quote, but it's about 65 to 70% winning trades. Okay, any other questions as they're coming up? So let's go back to that signal. This is, no, that's not the one for today. I have a couple questions, uh, similar questions just on today's trade. So uh, today's trade was bullish on the semiconductors. Just happened, uh, excuse me, sorry, it's bearish. Sorry, should read the very top. SMS changed to bull from bearish. No, sorry, it is bullish. <laughs> I'm reading it backwards. We are bullish on the SMH, so that means if we're going to follow the direction of the trade, we're going to either buy the SMH, that's uh, way one to, to make the trade. Way two, we're going to buy the two times bull ETF, which in this case, we show you in this column, is the USD. So we could buy the USD. If we wanted to do the options, we could buy a call on the SMH, right? That's a also bullish direction trade. We could also buy a call on the USD, which is the two times uh, directional bullish ETF. So ho hopefully that answered that question on, on today's trade. Okay, any last questions before we wrap up? We got done a little bit ahead of time. Hope you guys learned a ton. Um, I know that uh, this is kind of a different sort of uh, avenue, a different sort of trading than many of you are familiar with. So. That's good. Hopefully we'll introduce you to um, uh, we had some questions about uh, the liquidity on some of the options and some of the two times ETFs. All the directional signals and everything is based on the trading directions and uh, exiting or entering the trade is based on the core ETF. However, we will trade the other vehicles like the two times ETF. So we're not so much concerned with the volume or the bid ask spread or the, the open interest on the, the derivatives that we're trading. We're looking at the core signal and then we're going to go out and find something that we can use to trade that. Uh, in terms of the options, you know, obviously because it has a wider bid ask spread, we're not going to pay full retail or anything like that. So we put in the options trades. Typically, we have you know 15 minutes or so. Try to fish those around at the mid price or a little bit better, and most of the time we'll get those filled in about 15 minutes. All right. Let's see if there's any other questions. I'm kind of going through the questions. I think that is about it. So thanks everyone. Thanks for being on. Uh, welcome some of you as new members in the 25 spots. Again, call the Circular Voicemail line, 509-720-7867, or online, etftippingpoint.com slash six month, or etftippingpoint.com slash three year. We've been doing this for nine years, folks. Uh, we're not going anywhere. We've got hundreds and hundreds of satisfied customers that are on with us, and uh, it's been a fabulous ride. You know, we're, we're not hitting home runs every single every single month or anything like that, but we are uh, growing our trading counts month in, month out, year in, year out. And, uh, you know, really that's that's what matters. That's that's an important thing to take away. Someone said show slide two. What's slide two? I have no idea. All right, so thanks, everyone, for being on. 
I greatly appreciate the time.